This is the country of question marks, southern Rhodesia. It's a country that poses questions, some gay and some grim. How can there be so much beauty hidden behind its bushlands and baobabs? How long will a crisis atmosphere hang over this wonderland? How can its river, the Great Zambezi, embrace so much excitement and hope and history? And how long can a city like Salisbury, the capital, go on growing at the most prodigious rate ever seen in the whole African continent? Country of question marks. Come and see. Ten years have transformed what was a dirt strip shack town into a rich city of sheer loveliness. In this climate and soil, anything on earth will grow if it's given water. The gardens here are among the finest in the world. The new sugarcane industry has transformed a wilderness. And today, this is the biggest single tobacco selling center in the world. Come to an auction. Princess Margaret asked for a recording of this auctioneer's voice. It so intrigued her. Country of question marks. Country of contrasts. We're with the pipe-smoking women of the Batonka tribe, where the village beauties all insist on dressing their hair with clay dyed with ochre. These are the peoples who had to be moved to new homes when the big snake, the Zambezi, was dammed to make a reservoir so vast that the first astronauts on the moon will see it with the naked eye. They still use canoes dug out of tree trunks to catch their tiger fish. Whether you fish for your living or for pleasure, the new Kariba water is an angler's paradise with 10 pound fighting tigers and giant catfish of over 100 pounds. Strangely enough, only a few African tribes will eat fish. A lot of primitive ones are frightened of the very thought, though there's fish enough to banish all fear of famine from the whole of the African continent. And this tribe has discovered that that fish can be dressed, then dried and stored away. They could take that dried fish, if they wished, on a 300-mile trek that the great Cecil Rhodes knew before there were motor roads to the Matopas Hills, south of Bulawayo. Here, there are more question marks denoting wonderment. Was there some mythical magic sculptor at work here, carving weird and mammoth statues out of the living rock on the craggy mountainside? It seems so. This was the country of prehistoric artists, which, beyond anything in Africa, appealed to the man who gave Rhodesia its name. Rhodes said, I admire its grandeur and its loneliness, and therefore I desire to be buried there on the hill I used to visit, which I called the view of the world, in a square to be cut on the top of the hill, covered with a plain brass plate with these words thereon, here lie the remains of Cecil John Rhodes. And so it was done. Picture the Matabele warriors in battle, with their oxhide shields, their ostrich feather headgear, and their skirts of monkey tails. True descendants of the Stone Age hunters who lived in these caves 4,000 years ago and left on the rough walls of their dens these paintings for us to ponder on. Yes, they were Stone Age men, these surprisingly delicate draftsmen. Their weapon was the bow, the flint axe, the spike of ivory, or perhaps the horn of the rhinoceros that you still find in the Matopo National Park. On the whole, the rhino doesn't think much of Pathé Pick's whirring camera, but what the monkey feels about that strange newfangled jungle bird, the aeroplane, is another question mark. But there's no question in Rhodesia more stubborn than the one hanging unanswered in the air over something you see with a shock deep in the southeastern scrubland, the massive ruins of Zimbabwe, the House of Stone. Here's a whole fortress, not just a house, an ancient riddle, 200 miles from anything like a town.
not quite a hundred years ago, an ivory hunter, pushing through the brushwood, stepped out into open country and discovered this preposterous place. It might have been a mirage. It still is a mystery, except that radiocarbon tests have dated it to the time when ancient Britons were fighting off the Vikings. Modern builders find it difficult to restore fallen parts of these dry stone walls with the skill their creators showed. Some investigators have connected them with the Queen of Sheba, and for a time, they were thought to be King Solomon's mines. Clearly, there was a temple and a necropolis, and between them, the ruins of a city, robbed of a lot of its treasures in ages past. But gold and other finds are occasionally made, and there are seven of these Zimbabwe birds whose significance is still a mystery. ancient peoples could have done such delicate granite masonry in the heat of a mud hut countryside? Another question mark. Well, when the mind boggles over the unexplained and the seemingly inexplicable, the best thing to do, they say, is to get on a ship and go cruising. The Great Snake, the Zambezi River, comes in handy and exciting for just that. Trouble is, if you want a good look at a hippo, what you really need is a submarine, not a ship. Yet, for the crowning experience that the Zambezi has to offer, neither ship nor submarine would be the slightest use to you. You've got to get back into an aeroplane. Let's do so at once. Watch out for smoke ahead, or spray, that's what it really is, a spray cloud. And there it is. You're one up on that earlier African traveler, Dr. Livingston. He made the journey by canoe to become the first white man ever to see this true wonder of the world, the Victoria Falls. There isn't a spectacle in this whole world of nature. There isn't a thunderous roar more breathtaking than the Zambezi plunging headlong 300 feet to the chasm below. Just follow the rapids to the rainbow view you will never forget. There's perpetual rain here from the spray on this side of the great gorge that the river gouged out through long epochs of unrecorded history. The view's unchanged since Livingston first blinked unbelievingly at the glory of it all. At this moment, 11 million gallons of water are hurtling through the five great mouths they've carved out of the mile and more of rock where the riverbed suddenly collapses. There's nine times as much after the rains when spray obscures the whole view. The statistics make you dizzy, so forget them. The falls themselves, you will never forget.